Welcome to my first video of Maya Top Gear. Maya Top Gear, or Top Gear in general, is a thread I started back shortly after the 61 level cap came out, maybe? I think it was before level 72 was out. Um, to go over kind of all the best gear of Maya. I started this because uh, I was on Xbox at the time, playing with a lot of randoms. I didn't have a lot of PC friends. I didn't have PC friends, so I wasn't on PC. But uh, my real life friends stopped playing the game, and I was kind of playing around with the randoms. And a lot of them were just unaware of most of the really good guns in the game. They just kind of stuck to like what I call like the top five in a generic sense. I don't mean they're really the top five for everyone. People knew like the Sandhawk, the Herald. I mean, even the Pimpernel at that time was kind of an unknown, especially with Maya. Um, it wasn't well received at all. So I started that thread uh, to go over that. Now those have become kind of a staple. And uh, as I was updating my thread, I was looking at a lot of the video links on there. And a lot of them were kind of old and outdated. Uh, some of them were done very, very well, kind of like F Gamblers and Monumental Gamer did some really nice ones, among some others. But... Some other ones were kind of not so great, and other ones were just missing. So I thought I'd take this chance to start updating those, because that's kind of originally why I started a YouTube channel, is to do videos for my threads, uh, for my build guides, and this one's got quite a bit. Uh, I thought about doing it originally, and then I kind of got away from it with the Good, the Bad, the Ugly series. So I thought now would be a good time to get back to that. So... With that out of the way, Sandhawk. I'm going to do these videos in the same order as the thread is, so I'm starting off with SMGs, and the first one is the Sandhawk. I know I said this is more about than about just the top five, and the Sandhawk is that gun, but it's of course on the list. So, the Sandhawk. Probably the best SMG for Maya, and uh, I know I can sometimes be a Sandhawk hater, and I just used it so much I got burnt out on it. But it is ridiculously good. Now, on the card, it isn't that spectacular, but because it shoots out eight pellets, you can see those three on each side, and then those top two are kind of stacked on each other. They're hard to see. There's two in the middle there. So eight pellets, and when you hold onto the trigger, it's a four-round burst for 12 bullets. You can see there. 53 down to 41, that's 12. That's 32 pellets per trigger pull when you're ADSing. And they come out pretty quick. And that's why it's ridiculously powerful. Now, when I originally tested all these guns, I did not use the CATCOM because I thought that was unfair. But when I was doing my good, the bad, and the ugly stuff, and I wasn't using the CatCom, people complained. So in these videos, I will just use the CatCom to kind of fully get out of it what it can do. So blockade, bone, I'll be using my regular build. Now, a little bit more with the Sandhawk before I just go off. The best parts, I'm going to be talking about those, will be your doll grip, doll stock. Pretty much a doll gun. Sight is a personal preference. But... This is endgame parts, and I want to emphasize that. Because each trigger pull, like I covered, is 12 bullets. If you're in normal mode, this thing is not efficient with ammo. It is an ammo hog. If you're not at endgame, the doll stock, and the doll stock is what gives you the extra rounds, not the grip, the stock. Um... You can just end up wasting ammo to kill most things. You only really want that four-round bur burst for end game play and raid bossing. If you get one in normal and true Vault Hunter mode, and you find a really good Sandhawk, let's say you want to fire one, you get it in fire, you get the doll grip, you get a decent accessory, don't worry about the doll stock. Because uh, mission reward farming, like I covered in a few videos again, sucks. Now I'm going to show you guys so just so you can believe me you don't think i'm lying so here is doll grip as you can see bandit stock 53 44 that's nine bullets not 12 
That's the stock. Now I will go to, where is that? Doll stock bandit grip. Now this is 56. So I should go down to 44. Four rounds. Stock, not grip. Um, but speaking of that, the best one is all doll. But the bandit one isn't terrible. You're not going to notice that lack of accuracy. You do have a slightly bigger mag size, but that's a lot more on the reload. The doll wins the day on DPS pretty much no matter what. You can't get the bandit one to do better. But the bandit one's not terrible. So once again, if you get a pretty good one with a bandit grip, it's okay. I think anything other than dollar bandit grip, you're wasting your... You might want to keep farming. Uh, Hyperion grip's not going to be good. Molly Wong grip's not going to be good. Because this thing does chew through his magazine fairly quickly. But So that is 53... Um, let's see the bandit with four sights. 56. So, it's not a lot more shots, but it's some. A tough decision. Hmm, where did my regular one go? So, you know, that's a little bit on parts before I go start killing things. I want to do that in these videos to kind of talk about variations and all that stuff, so... Sorry if you find that a little bit boring. I think most people actually find it a little interesting. So, part of why this is good, that's what I want to talk about as I go through and kill things, is not only it's raw power, but obviously Maya has SMG synergies because of the cat cop. But it's also a really good chain reaction gun, as you can kind of see there, doing some decent damage, because four... I guess four waves of those pellets. Um, is 32 bullets, and that's nice with chain reaction. Yeah, come out of there. Alright, don't spawn other enemies. Yeah, they spawn. I sometimes hate that guy. I shouldn't even say sometimes. I always hate that guy. Now, the Sandhawk's weakness is close range. But there you see, if you just back up a little bit... There's another guy hiding there. Perfect. And a guy with a laser SMG. And another guy. So they're all over there. Um, some people, you know, kind of get on this about really bad at close range because the bullets don't split yet. You have to be... So there they don't split, there they don't split, there they do. There they do. Whoa. I should be paying a little bit more attention here. But, uh... You don't have to be that far for the bullets to split. And this is an SMG, not a shotgun. So that was the most annoying thing when that happens, which seems to happen all the time. So this, I'm going to group these guys up. And you can see Watt took a bunch of damage there. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I do not, I'm not using Cloud Kill in these videos. Cloud Kill now is so powerful that uh, it can skew some guns. And I don't want to do that with these videos. I want this to be about the guns. And the guns with a combination of common gear. I'm going to use a bow. I'm going to use the Catcom. Alright, so I already took care of all those guys. You can see there, it's doing a lot of damage. I had to stop shooting Oni. I could have taken him out in one phase lock pretty easily, but... Uh, I didn't want to get hit by those bombs. So this area went faster to make up for that first area since I spawned all those guys just killing. But you can see it's taking a toll on the ammo. It's not the most ammo efficient guns, and that's a factor with going through top gear. Now the raw power of this kind of outweighs that. 
And it's not like I'm in ammo trouble at this point. But uh, this thing does chew through a lot of ammo. Bit three bullets per round. It takes quite a bit. Calm down. Chain reaction definitely helps that. But the thing, the thing's damage, like I said, kind of overrides that concern. But it is a gun you are going to have to stop and pick up ammo and uh, running the peak with it. Hopefully that blew that up. Yep. I hate those barrels, so I just throw scorn through there. It's another one of those uh, awesome scorn things. Back there. I hate those guys. I just hate when enemies kind of rubber band and don't uh, singularity. Right, where are these guys? I hear another SMG I don't like. I think he had it. He had it. That's that rubber banding I was talking about that I really don't like. And that was another example of a good chain reaction with it. It's also a pretty solid dot gun just because the amount of pellets it puts out. And that works really good with life steal, uh, life tap, or moxie. As you can see, this guy is burning. Pretty good. So if I needed to heal, a lot of times, if you are using the Grog, let's say, you can just switch to the Grog and you heal just from the dots this puts out, especially combined with Flicker. Uh, some people shit on Flicker saying it's bad, but guns with this, if you're using the Grog, Flicker's an amazing skill to have with it. Because you can kind of see these dots flying around there. You can heal just off of those. That's a pretty big deal. So instead of chucking a grenade or anything, you just swap to your grog and you're healed. Stop. Another one down. You can see there the chain reaction example once again. Kind of from wow. that drop, that's kind of cool. But it just slaughtered them both really fast. Now at this point, I am getting down to that. I think I'm below half. But uh, the game will start giving me way to drop, so I should be more than fine. I mean, it's not like any of the bosses take much to kill with this thing. It comes in all elements, including non-elemental. And if you're not raiding with it, a non-elemental one is actually really solid. You know, you lose that matching bonus, but so many enemies have shields that you just kind of burn through it. Although you do lose that cool dot healing that I like with it. But there, you know, I took out three enemies in a phase lock pretty efficiently. I got a fire dot. I don't love that. But I'm hopefully, hopefully, this is also showing you that there's a no slay kill. Said it's not that hard to get my distance to get my burst back. Stay still. But hopefully, I'm showing you that this is not just a B delivery system. Now, obviously, with seven unlisted pellets and its fire rate with the burst, it's not at all. Free. I mean, it is cool. one of, if not the best B gun in the game. But it is more than just a bee delivery system, for sure. I don't like these guys flanking me. They sometimes come out with really good guns. Well, I'm up here, though. I'm going to hit these two ammo chests. Wait for this guy to come to his death. That was a waste of a phase lock. But... And I only have the boss after this, so it's not that big of a deal.
Hopefully I can get some chain reaction over there. Weaken some guys up. And one little guy left to kill. Where is he? He's up there. This is a scorn kill for sure. I want to keep my phase lock for the boss. And of course he didn't take... God, you're being a little dick. And you're rubber banded the pole. This guy is ruining all my joy right now. So these guys, I kind of like to group up and let Chain Reaction do its thing. Because they are phase lock bait. And uh, I didn't do as good as I was hoping. I should have shot them below, that's my bad. You can see right there, it just eats through that guy's shield. And roof go down. It goes down really easily, even though I didn't hit it like I should have. So, this is why the Sandhawks is the number one SMG. It's just, it's raw power. And, you know, let's call it what it is. For raiding Maya, this is pretty much the best gun for almost every raid boss with her. Not 100%. Um, like, the shock conference calls better on the Son of Craw. Um, some people have done some interesting things with the Interfacer and certain things, and obviously you want a Grog for raiding. And, you know, Norfleet on Hyperius is pretty nice to just uh, kind of have that oh shit finisher. But uh, it is one of the, if not the top raiding gun for my... Uh, um, it's a damn good mobbing weapon, as you saw, even though a little ammo efficient. Not to the point where I'm getting in trouble if I just stop to pick up a little bit of ammo. And once I get a little light on ammo, the game picks it up with the weighted ammo drops. But this thing wrecks everything, and I picked this map because it's got four mini bosses and some decent mobbing. It's got a good mix of that stuff. So, yeah, it's just definitely one of her uh, best weapons, and it's... Well, the top gear, I don't like to get too picky about like the one through four order or whatever one through whatever in the top gear. Because I have two categories in those threads if you haven't read them. And the thread will be linked here. It's top gear and honorable mention. Uh, the top gear is kind of like the creme de la creme. But the honorable mention are guns that probably aren't raiding type material, maybe. But you can definitely take on in game bosses and just play the regular game with them. With relative ease, they're very powerful guns that work very well with it and have synergy with Maya. Some things that hold them out from being the top gear, um, things like elemental locked or difficulty to use or difficulty obtain are just not quite the raw power of the top gear ones, like Sandhawk. But the honorable mention ones are amazing, and some of my favorite guns are in the honorable mention category. So. They are way more than a viable. They're incredibly powerful, just for some reason or another, they're slightly held back. So I hope you guys enjoy this series and uh, watch these videos. And I want to just go more in depth with the guns in my brief paragraph about them in the thread to really kind of complete that thing. Although it's old, it's still relevant and still gets a lot of views. So uh, come by and check it out. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Bye.